Hi. We had a very important vote today on the House floor. It was on the housing bill, and uh, it passed overwhelmingly, uh, 272 to 152. And this was a major piece of legislation, a major bailout. I was kiddingly wanting to call the bill uh, the mother of all bailouts, but then I qualified that to say that actually the bailout of the housing industry has occurred now over the past year because the Federal Reserve has actually invested, so to speak, uh, almost $300 billion in, in bailing out the industry. And uh, this bill has frequently been referred to as uh, uh, entailing $300 billion also of appropriations, but that has been changed. And they changed the number and they said it would be essentially $25 billion, but that's just talk because uh, it uh, is now doesn't really have a number to it. it. It means that the original line of credit, which helped to cause all this trouble, may, you know, uh, given the assumption and the attitude that uh, the federal government would always bail out Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they always had a line of credit to the treasury of $2.5 billion. Well, today, the line of credit is open-ended. They now, Treasury is now allowed to buy all Fannie Mae, uh, Fr Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae housing security unlimited. They get to make the decisions. The Congress doesn't even make the decision on how much or how much money is appropriated. But interestingly enough, what they did though, buried in the bill, which was nearly 600 pages long, buried in the bill, which a lot of members weren't quite aware of, the national debt was moved up $800 billion. So they're planning on spending you know, a lot of money. So the national debt is being increased and uh, this is open-ended and uh, the Treasury can buy these securities. But over the last year, uh, whether it was the uh, $30 billion that uh, was used by the Fed uh, to up uh, Bear Stearns and the rest of the housing industry, literally what they have done is they have exchanged treasury bills for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac securities. And this means that that is the asset they're holding that backs up our currency. It's an asset that nobody else wants. It's losing value. If they dumped it on the market today, it, the value of these uh, stocks would probably go to zero. But that is literally the asset behind our currency. There was a day, of course, when we had gold and silver behind our currency, and then treasury bills have generally been used over these many years. But now, uh, these assets, uh, housing mortgage securities, are the assets held behind our currency. So, in a way, it's a very serious situation. Today, though, many people voted for it, not because they liked it and liked the idea, they know it's terrible, they know it's a lot of money, but they had been convinced that if we don't bail out the housing industry, everything is going to be much worse. And there is some truth to the argument that things can get pretty bad by not bailing out. But to keep the inflation going, keep printing more money to prop up a system that's not viable isn't the answer. So you can't solve the problem created by inflation, that is the creation of money and credit out of thin air, with more money and credit out of thin air. Because although it might tide us over for a while, what it does, it puts pressure on the dollar. And of course, internationally, that's what our, our problem has been, is the value of the dollar. And it keeps going down in value, which means prices are going to go up. But in this bill, there were other things in there that weren't very often discussed that I did get my two minutes on the House floor and I got to bring, it, bring these issues up. One, uh, one had to do with anybody who works in the mortgage industry will now be fingerprinted. And uh, I, I made the point that, you know, it wasn't a lack of fingerprinting of mortgage brokers that caused the crisis. The crisis was caused by certain legislation that encouraged loans like this, as well as the Federal Reserve giving us artificial in, uh, interest rates and a very expanded money supply. And now they're saying, well, one of the corrections is going to have to be if we only fingerprinted mortgage brokers, we're going to solve our whole problems, which, which is, of course, uh, complete nonsense. The other thing that they did, they slipped in something else really unrelated to the crisis uh, uh, completely. And that is that all credit card transactions will be reported to the IRS. 
and more regulations, more reporting, more surveillance, and they're hoping, you know, to collect more money in, in this effort. They're always coming up short. So this means more surveillance of every single thing you do in life and now everything you buy and sell on your credit card. Every transaction will be reported uh, to, to the IRS. So the trend, the, the trend is not good. I did mention on the House floor uh, very briefly that in the year 2001, I had introduced legislation in the form of amendment that would have removed this line of credit of $2.5 billion because I considered this in, uh, as uh, encouraging moral hazard, people willing to take risk because it meant that the signal was sent out there that, it, that uh, the government, the taxpayers, would always stand behind mortgages no matter uh, what would happen. And here it turns out that this $2.5 billion now has turned into hundreds of, of, of billions of dollars. And uh, of course, uh, not many people paid any attention to this back in 2000, 2001. But it wasn't so much that uh, I was clairvoyant on this as much as good, sound economic policy and uh, political instincts. Uh, it wasn't difficult to see this bubble coming. The bubble had been building for many, many years, just as the dollar bubble has been building for 35 years. So ultimately, my biggest concern is that of the dollar bubble. So every time we bail out anybody, any time we have to run up a deficit or take care of any problem that we have or fighting a war, all these conditions are always done, put to pressure on the dollar. So those who are very concerned about what it would be like if we had a major crisis due to the failure of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the bigger crisis will be when the dollar doesn't function very well because then the people really suffer. So we need to try very hard to understand why these bubbles are formed and prevent them from happening rather than saying, well, it looks like the market is trying to deflate a bubble. What we have to do is pump harder, pump harder with money and credit to keep it up. And that, once again, the analogy that I've used so often is it's like a drug addict that is totally addicted and uh, the only thing he wants is another fix. In this case, the economy is addicted to easy money, inflationary pr uh, programs of the Federal Reserve, as well as deficit financing. And if we quit, there is some pain with it. But if not, we can kill the patient. In this case, it could be the dollar. So hopefully we could uh, soon, that we will soon wake up and change our ways. But today's vote on the House floor dealing with the housing bubble, there's no sign that we're about to tighten our belt and live within our means.